be back filming my second Dry Bar Comedy Special. It is exciting. Uh, weird time to do a comedy special, right? <laughs> it has been a weird year, guys. It is uh, 2020. I'm ready for it to be over. Uh, but you know what? I found you got to do things that uh, make you happy, right? Find things that build your self-esteem. For me, it's Starbucks. Uh, yeah, you got to go into Starbucks because here's the thing. You go there, they can build your self-esteem. Here's how. Okay, you go in, you order your drink, whatever you get. What they do is they put your name on the cup, right? So every time I go to Starbucks, when they ask me for my name, I say, uh, <clears throat> handsome, right? <laughs> we put handsome on the cup so they have to yell it out for everyone to hear in the establishment. It feels great. Ladies, you got to do it. Beautiful, gorgeous, shout it out, builds self-esteem. It's great, right? <laughs> yeah. So I go into this Starbucks, brand new Starbucks, grand opening, first day. I go into this place. I go up to the cashier. She's like, all right, sir, would you like to give her my drink? And she's like, okay, what was your name? I said, <clears throat> handsome. And she's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm like, what's this, sir? That is not your name. I'm like, yes, it is. All right, you just put on the cuffs. Like, I'm not doing it. I'm like, you do it. All right, you put on the cup. She's like, I'm not doing it. I'm like, you do it. Put it on the cup. Right, and she gets all frustrated with me, right? She turns around to her manager. She's like, Brad. Brad, this guy wants me to put handsome on his cup. And I'm not kidding you, Brad turns around. He's like... Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> yeah! Suck it, Denise! Yeah, and I made her say my name three times, all right? She's not ruining my day. a weird time but guys I, I'll tell you this I mean, oh man I am just I got a wife and two kids I'm just happy to be out of the house uh, <laughs> oh, right oh my god yeah, I, I had to homeschool my kids <laughs> homeschool my kids got bullied way more at homeschool <laughs> oh man it was my wife is a no-nonsense woman she's I'm the math teacher uh, they're getting a solid fifth grade education uh, <laughs> Oh, I have successfully obliterated Common Core from their brains. We carry the two in my house, okay? Yes. Math was hard enough to learn the first time. I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it. But I'll say this. Teachers, they need to be paid way more, all right? They really do. Gotta take care of some teachers, man. Because they do. Not all of them. Not all the teachers uh, deserve to be paid more, okay? There are Meredith teachers out there, okay? Yeah, if you don't know what a Meredith is, guys, if you haven't seen my first special, okay? Meredith, okay, everybody's talking about Karen, all right? You know Karen, the ask for the manager lady with the hair, you know, the, right? That's Karen. No, Meredith is pulling all the strings. She's Karen's best friend, but she's making Karen do all the stuff, right? Yeah. Meredith is terrible, you guys. So I run into this teacher Meredith once, right? First off, my son gets into this new school, and my son loves sports. He loves to watch sports, play sports. His favorite sport is football, all right? That is American football, all right? None of this crap, all right? <laughs> Real football, all right? With touchdowns and such, where you can actually hit them. Not just flick them in the air and they're like, ah! They're like, red card! You know that crap? <laughs> Got soccer fans in the crowd? What's going on here? But he loves football, he loves football, so what he did is he took a football to this new school to play with his new friends, which is great, right? But no, teacher Meredith stops him, she's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, young man, uh, you can't play with that ball here. That ball has a pointy end and it might hurt the other kids. I'm like, what? It's a football age. She's like, actually, sir, uh, we don't allow baseballs either. Those things are hard, they could hurt the other kids. I'm like, do you have any other stupid crap to tell us? She's like, actually, um, since you asked, uh, when it snows here, we don't allow the kids to make balls out of the snow because we're worried that they might throw them at each other. I'm like, that's what you do with a snowball, lady. You throw them at people. Round of applause if you had epic snowball fights when you were a kid. Yeah. yeah. They were great, man. I grew up in the late 80s, early 90s. We had epic snowball fights. We had one rule. You couldn't cross the line. That was it. You get that perfect snowball, you dunk it in water, get it all hard, right? Yeah, it was the 80s, kids could take it, they were tough, okay? 
see your best friend across the field, you're like, <laughs> and then, bam, hits him right in the face. His nose is bleeding, he's crying. But did he hate you? No, he respected you for it. Because <laughs> kids were tough, man. Kids aren't tough anymore. They're not tough. I know some of you might be thinking, oh, my kid's tough. No, they're not the little wieners, all right? They're not tough. <laughs> But it's not their fault. They're just getting rid of all the stuff that makes kids tough anymore. For example, on the playground, you know what they got rid of? The merry-go-round. You guys remember the merry-go-round? <laughs> thing will mess you up, huh? Yeah, they got rid of that because of how we got on it, all right? Because you didn't just get on that thing, one foot on, one foot off, grab all that bar. Another little kid named Timmy, he's just straddling the inside bar with hope and happiness in his eyes. You're like, all right, Timmy, you ready? Here we go. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it, Timmy? No, that's not how you got on. How did you get on that thing? You're like, <laughs> <laughs> you were flying. <laughs> yeah, zero to 60, right? Yeah, zero to 60 in 0.2 seconds. You were gone. Yeah, what's Timmy doing? He's racking himself on the inside bar, right? He's just like, ah! vomiting, just a spray of vomit. That was awesome. But you didn't get near that thing at full velocity. When it was like, really going? Cause like, it hurt. There was one idiot kid that would try. He would just latch on. And if you were too close, his feet would kick you in the head right before it slingshot him across the playground and he would skip across the pavement like a skipping rock. The pavement, remember the pavement? It was either pavement, gravel, or shards of wood. Big shards. That, they impaled you. You got hurt on the playground when I was a kid, right? Then they got rid of the good swings, the big ones, those huge ones, the ones that would send you to the moon, right? Those huge swings. They got rid of those because of how we got off of them. Because <laughs> you didn't wait for the swing to stop, did you? No. When that bell rang to go inside for school, you just got off wherever you were at. Right? So if you're at the top of the swing, it's like, guess I'm flying today. <laughs> and it hurt, but we did it. My mom was the best swing pusher. You felt safe with her. She loved you. Every push was love. She's like, I love you. I missed you. My dad would try and wrap me around the top pole if he could. Right? He made it a goal. He's like, we have insurance. Let's do this. Right? Let's put our premium to work. Right? Dad did what we called the underdog. I don't know if you guys know what that is, right? <laughs> if you don't know what the underdog is, that's when dad's pushing you, right? Dad goes all the way through, right? But right before going all the way through, he does a little flick. You know what the flick does? It kinks both the chains. So when you come back down, you free fall, drop down, all right? If you lived through a day of dad pushing you on the swing, you felt alive that day. And you hugged mom just a little bit tighter when you got home. Right? Oh. Guys, on the playground, we played games just to hurt each other. That's what we did. We played butts up. Anyone ever play butts up? Yeah. All you needed was a bunch of your friends, a wall, and a tennis ball, all right? How you play this game is you throw that ball against the wall. One of your buddies will try and go and catch that ball before it hits the ground. If they try and catch it and drop it, they have to run and touch the wall before one of your buddies grabs that ball and throws it against the wall. If the ball gets there before you do, you now have to stand on that wall like this while your buddies each get a turn to pegging you with it at short range. It was awesome. And I was, here's the thing guys, I love butts up, I was, I was a big kid. Okay, I was, I was chunk, I was, I was, I was a fat kid, okay? I was a big kid. When I smiled, like I had the big puppy cheeks, you know the puppy? So every time I smiled, I couldn't see anymore. It was just like, I couldn't see. I was a big kid. So playing butts up, that ball comes off the wall. I'm like, yes, I go to catch it and I miss it with my chubby fingers. And falls to the ground, I'm like, no. And I go, I go to touch the wall, I touch it, I'm like, ah, ah. Then the ball goes, poof, and hits me in the face. Blood everywhere. Then we played smear the person. Um, <laughs> anyone ever play smear the person? 
terrible name for a game, am I right? That is a terrible name. Uh, but when you're a kid, you don't know it's just the name of the game. You play it, and if you don't know what that is, basically you have a football, again, a bunch of your buddies, who's ever touching the ball gets obliterated by everyone else, right? <laughs> Here's an interesting story about Smear the Person for me. Uh, we're gonna go back before school started, right? We're back to school shopping, all right? Getting those clothes for the new year. We were rich, we went to Kmart, all right? <laughs> so we went to Kmart, and uh, I go and I, I get the, the you, got th you got the set, you got the three pairs of pants, three shirts, and socks and underwear. You doubled up on the socks and the underwears, right? So I got my Wrangler jeans with the snap button. Uh, first off, Terrible invention, the snap button on the pants, especially for a fat kid, okay? My ritual, every single morning, me laying on my bed. <sighs> Dang it! Just like, never stayed close, that thing. Right, so I got, my, I got my pants. Now, it's underwear time. Now, I usually go with the boxer shorts, all right? A lot of room to work with, a little breathing room. But then, I see this package with the underwears. The guy with abs, just <laughs> silk bikini underwears. And I'm like, that's what's been my problem the whole time. I got the wrong underwear, right? So I convinced my mom in the fourth grade to get me silk bikini underwears, guys. So it's first day of school. Now we usually start, right? The end of August, beginning of September. You got like winter clothes, right? You want to get ready for winter, so but you want to wear your new clothes. So I got all my clothes on, got my silk bikini underwears on. <sighs> I get to school, all right? First recess happens, we're playing smear the person. <laughs> right? And I go and I, I get the ball and then boom! And then I hear this. <laughs> silk bikini underwears now became silk thong underwears, all right? <laughs> and it hurt, but I'm like, oh, I'm a tough kid. I'm gonna play through the pain. So I'm playing through it, right? And as the recess is going, and I'm playing, those silk bikini underwears were just <laughs> working their way up. My butt was swallowing the silk bikini underwears, just burrowing and burrowing. So by the end of the recess, I now have a problem, okay? But I gotta deal with it, I gotta deal with it. So I go to the bathroom, and I don't know how to uh, express this in any way but this. Have you ever seen a magic show where the magician pulls out the endless handkerchief? <laughs> seen that just... <laughs> I felt like a lawnmower just... <laughs> you know, and finally got it dealt with, threw it away, right? And now I'm going commando the rest of the day. All right? I am a big kid. Ladies, I don't have what you call the thigh gap, okay? It is just this all day long, just... <laughs> I am rubbing, it's terrible. Right, so now by the end of the day, I've had two other recesses. I am raw, guys, on the thighs. And I had to walk a mile and a half to get home after school, right? So it is just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just like, <laughs> all the way home. Just, boy, finally I get home, right? And I'm just, I just pants down, so I, <laughs> right? My mom comes in, hey, honey, how was your first day? <laughs> no, it was like very embarrassing, okay? That was my first real embarrassing moment. My mom seen me <laughs> it's terrible, guys. <laughs> and I've had some embarrassing moments in my life, you guys. Like, that was just the first. And uh, yeah, there's more. So we go, now we go to college, right? College, I thought I made it through my life without all the embarrassing stuff. But I, got to, I get to college, and I had two scholarships in college. Uh, I had uh, competitively fought, I got a judo scholarship, so judo martial art. Competitively fought in judo from age four to 22. Even Woo. competed in the uh, Junior Olympics when I was 17 years old. Woo. So yeah, did some cool stuff with it. Uh, but I got a scholarship, and uh, here's the thing about judo, guys. It's throws, chokes, pins, and arm bar. There's no judo kick or chop, okay? It's just throws, chokes, pins, and arm bars. Now I was pretty good at the chokes. All right, I knew the chokes pretty well. Now you know you got a good choke by the sound the person's making when you're choking them, okay? Yeah, now if they're just like, that means you almost got it, okay? It's the squeak on the end when you know you really got it locked in. They're like, you know? The reason I know this, because before I passed out, that's the sound I made, you know what I mean? It's very difficult. So I had that scholarship in judo, and I was also, I got a scholarship for being the mascot at my college. Now, 
I'm an eagle. We are the eagles, right? And I look like seven foot tall in this thing. I a big muscle suit, big huge head, right? And I'm going, and we're doing a basketball game. I'm doing my thing, I'm dancing, I'm doing all this stuff. Then the other mascot of the other team decides to want to mess with me. Yeah, it was the snow badger, is what it was. It was a snow badger, right? And they're the badger. They, they didn't have the muscle suit. It was very, they could move and do all this stuff. I'm very boxy and stuff. But they pushed me in my back. Pushed me in the back. Went, you know, you can't talk because you're a mascot, so you're doing body language stuff, right? It's like, what? You want to, you know, they pushed me. They go straight in for a double leg takedown, guys. If you notice, it's right in. But I have the judo background, just came right through. Yeah, come right here, I get right underneath the arm and just whoosh, and their feet go whoop, and bam, that floor, that place shook, you guys. It shook, the whole crowd's like, oh, and I'm just like this, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, you know. I do one of these, I'm like, by the end, you know. Feeling so good about myself. Turns out it was a woman. Uh, felt terrible. I just feel so terrible after I'm like, I am so sorry. Why did you come at me like that? You know, it's just, just like, I didn't know you were gonna throw me on the ground. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you were a badger. I was a beagle. I don't know. <laughs> it's terrible. I was, I was totally embarrassed, man. It was crazy. Oh, another embarrassing time. It's more than the adult time. I, I went to the beach. You guys in, uh, went in the ocean. Um, I'm terrified of the ocean. There's stuff in there. Uh, I don't know if you know this. There's things in the ocean. And so I go in the ocean. I'm all by myself. You know, I'm all by myself, chilling out. I, I worked on cruise ships. That's why I don't just go to random beaches by myself like a creeper. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm, uh, I'm in the water. Everything's fine. I'm hanging out with my dad bods all, all out and everything. And uh, yeah, it's total dad bod thing going on over here. Yeah, I take this jacket off. It's like a biscuits can. Just poof, it comes flying out. The voice sharp corners is terrible. All right, so I'm in the water. Everything's going great till I feel this poof, right in the side of my leg. Something hits me, and out of nowhere, I'm just like, ah! like scream. So I mean, everybody, so loud. People are running out of the water. Right? They're freaking out. They run out of the water. I'm screaming. And I'm, I'm, if, I'm just like, oh, I'm so sorry, it's fine, it's all right, it's seaweed. Give me a leg, guys, come back in the water. It's okay, I felt like a complete idiot, right? But then this big buff dude saved me, okay? Big buff dude. He didn't carry me out of the water like a baby, all right? He just looked like a bigger idiot than me because he had the, this, we're talking, this guy was no neck big, guys. Bodybuilder, you know what I'm talking about when their head just grows into their shoulders. They do that big guy walk like this, right? And he's wearing a Speedo, so it's very uncomfortable for everybody anyways, right? Comes in the water. Now he's yell, he, he turns back towards the beach. He starts yelling at his lady. She heard me scream, she's scared. She thinks there's sharks in there and stuff, right? He's like, babe, babe, come on in here, babe. Babe, get back in the water, there's no sharks here. I'll punch you in the face, just come on, get in here, right? So I figure I'm gonna mess with this guy, right? He's about from me to the end of the stage. So what I did is I grabbed that seaweed that hit me in the leg, right? And I just tossed it at him. And I hit him right where the neck would be if he had one. <laughs> I'd never seen a man run on water before, but it was impressive. That guy was gone. He's like, ah! like he was out of there. But I'll tell you this, as soon as I threw that seaweed, I became a Navy SEAL, went under the water. I was just like, <laughs> just did short breaths all the way down the beach. Because he would have murdered me. But I'll tell you this, I was embarrassed even before that. So I had the underwear thing. I beat up a woman. Before that, the one thing that embarrassed me was a big thing, guys. It changed my life, actually. Junior high. It's just the worst time for a kid, right? Seventh grade. That's the worst time in a kid's life. Everything bad for you happens in seventh grade. Your body's changing. Your voice is everywhere, right? You smell bad. Nothing good for you happens in the seventh grade, right? And I'm still a big kid, right? I'm still a big kid. I'm still trying to grow and, and, and work out and do all that stuff. But I decided I have done sports. I've done other things. I want to do something that's going to take myself out of my comfort zone, do something different. So I decided I'm going to go into drama. I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to be a thespian, right? So I go into this drama class. First day, 
my teacher comes and she's like, okay, we have three options for plays this year. Frumpled Fairy Tales, Knights of the Rad Table, and The Emperor's New Clothes. Now there was a stipulation for The Emperor's New Clothes. One of our classmates would have to go out in front of 500 people in nothing but their underwear and socks. Now this would never fly these days, right? <laughs> Couldn't send a junior high kid out in their underwear, that's called prison time, okay? <laughs> Can't do that, but no, that, that's the one we chose because we want to embarrass one of our classmates, right? <laughs> But guess who gets the role as the emperor? Me. Yeah, that's right, the fat kid. Right? So I'm like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm going to own this. It's opening night. It's sold out. Everybody knows about it. Right? So I'm on the wing of the stage. Nobody can see me yet. All right? I got my, I got my tidy whities on. That's right. I upgraded to the tidy whities. I got my socks and a robe covering me. And I go to step on the side of the stage. It was a wood stage, and they had just buffed it out to get it ready for the show that night. Now, I am a fat kid. <laughs> with socks and my underwear on a slippery floor in front of an audience, all right? This is a worst scenario for me, right? So I had to improvise, I had to improvise. So I take off the socks, I ball up the socks, I hear the line I'm supposed to go out to have nowhere to put the socks. <laughs> Except for one, that's right. I stuffed them, I stuffed the socks. <laughs> yep, and I go out, my moment comes. <laughs> Screams and laughter throughout the whole auditorium. You guys, yeah. My grandma was there. She nearly died that night, okay? Yeah. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have put the socks in the front. Uh, there's just a nugget hanging on the back of my tidy whities <laughs> But in that moment, you guys, <laughs> that moment changed me. Because the eruption of laughter that came over that crowd was, it was insane. And I felt that energy and I just, I knew that from that moment on, I wanted to go out in the world and make it a better place and make people laugh and just enjoy their lives a little bit. Because there's enough garbage on the planet, we need more positivity and stuff going out. Yeah. I love it. I love this job. I've been able to travel over 22 different countries doing this job. This is an amazing job for me. I love doing this. And, you know, since this pandemic and stuff, you know, if you kind of feel that stuff ripped away from you, the thing you felt like was, you were meant to do, right? But I'm here, and we're doing this. We're doing a special, and you guys are here. It's great. Ugh. But I love this job. I've had some other crazy jobs in the past. Uh, one of them was I was a whitewater rafting guide. Has anyone ever been whitewater rafting before? Yeah. Oh man, I love whitewater rafting. I was 18, got my guide license, took people down the river for a few years. Uh, one trip sticks out to me the most though. One trip sticks out to me. Uh, my boss comes up to me one day. He's like, all right, uh, we have a different trip today. Uh, we're gonna be taking down the deaf and blind kids. I'm like, <clears throat> excuse me? He's like, we they're not deaf and blind. We have some deaf kids, some blind kids. I'm like, that doesn't make it any better, man. This is an extreme sport. That seems dangerous. He's like, we do it every year. It's fine. I'm like, <laughs> so the kids get there, right? I'm a little panicked. These kids' lives are in my hands, right? So I'm a little panicked, but the kids get there. It's actually pretty cool. Now, before we put the raft in the water, the blind kids would actually go around the raft and feel it so they get familiar with it. One of the blind kids actually got on top of the raft, started running across it. He's just like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Right? So now I'm jacked, I'm ready to go. Right? So I get, my, I get my group of kids, we get the raft in the water. Now I also had uh, a deaf interpreter lady in the boat with us. She was interpreting to the deaf kids to give them the commands when they needed to paddle and everything through the rapids. She's in the front of the boat, okay? So we go through the first set of rapids. Um, it's, a, it's a little crazy, but not too, not too intense, but the kids are having a great time, right? So we're going through this, this set, but then I know the second set is a little bit more intense. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give these kids a ride, right? So I go through this whole gut and I hit it perfect. I just, boom, right? The water's crushing over, right? The kids are having a great time. Well, I lost the deaf interpreter lady out of the boat. Yeah, she's gone, yeah. The deaf kids, they're freaking out, okay? The blind kids have no idea what's happening. They're just having a good time. <laughs> Guys, you gotta stop paddling. I gotta save the lady, all right? Now here's the thing about this lady. She's been signing all day, all right? So, and she's panicking, so she forgets that she can speak to me, right? So 
she's in her life jacket signing to me from the water. I don't do sign language. I don't know what she's saying. She's just going. <laughs> Which apparently means help me, all right? I'm just seeing a thumbs up. I'm like, you're good, we're okay, right? So, but she's freaking out, I see her face, she's panicked. I'm like, all right, I need you to calm down, okay? Calm down, I need you to talk to me. Tell me your name, what's your name? She's like, it's Meredith. I'm like, I'll see you down river. <laughs> Thanks you guys so much, my name's Steve Harmison. Have a great night.